Look at us. We are ill, but we deny our malady. We hide it behind ideas, words, phantom theories. The symptoms, though, remain inescapable. Violence, poverty, famine, ultimately war. We are ill, the sickness deep. It is a mental illness, a pathology that allows us to destroy life, one another. We are deranged, unabashedly rationalizing brutality. What makes us so? Alienation, atomization, isolation, our common condition, stems from the root fear that we are alone, trapped in boxes of ego, us versus the universe, in certain doom. It yields to materialism, the division of life from death, love from pain, us from else, and lastly, I from them. Fundamentally disassociated with the community of life and the laws of nature that govern survival. Dissociated and standing still, waiting for an idea to come and save us all. Our divisions are as ancient as abstraction and symbolism, born before humans at the dawn of consciousness. But the age of its invention does not validate our assumed divisions. The reality of the situation will forever be. We share an essential unity. There is this one moment in the infinity of its experience. Okay. Now, the uh, second step in our, our 12 step program to destroy the ego here is um, to admit that there is a greater power. Um, that can restore our sanity. And that greater power is, is this oneness that, we speak of, that Betty talks about frequently here. And to a degree, this is, this is sort of a false choice, um, I think, because we are part of that greater power. We are, we are the oneness. We are, you know, we expand to the edge of the universe, each of us individually. So, as much as there is a, a greater power out there that can restore our sanity, that power is, is us. Um, number three, step three. Make a decision to turn our will over to that greater power. And again, um, this, this gets to that sort of false choice. We are always part of that, that greater will um, we, we confuse ourselves with illusions, with our, with our ideas of separateness. And um, all we really have to do is let go of, of those illusions in order to grant that greater will, that greater self power over us. Um, so I think what is actually happening as, as we approach the world through the transcendental mindset is uh, we're break, breaking the will free from the ego um, and letting the will be the will of the universe and the greater, the greater being of which we are all a part. Number four, make a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. And, uh, it, you know, this is something we can all do every day, something we come here to do together uh, on Sundays. Um, the way that we can get to this, this place of oneness is by really <coughs> focusing our attention on those illusions that, that separate us from nature, separate us from, from the universe. And it can take a lot of different forms. It's, I think it always sort of comes under the rubric of meditation. There's prayer, there's yoga, uh, there's silently sitting on the beach and, and watching the waves roll in. Uh, there's music and breathing. Uh, there, are, there are a number of paths, and they've been discovered by countless cultures over the ages, and they, they all lead to this, to this same place, this feeling of oneness, this transcendence of the self into 
into the greater whole. Um, so, you know, whatever form of meditation you take, it's always a tool um, to get to that transcendence. Uh, the fifth step here, as we're letting go, um, admit to yourself and another human being the nature of your wrongs, our wrongs, my wrongs. Uh, I think this is, this is a critical step. And we can keep all these internal realizations to ourselves, um, but it's when we share them and see how we all share in the same thing that, that we can take action together. Um, so by admitting to ourselves that we're addicted to our ego, that we're addicted to being separate from the universe, um, we can see, we can see it. We can make it a tangible thing, and we can see how small that really is. You know, uh, that we all share this this thing that keeps us from acting. And uh, I, I think that's a critical step that we don't take off enough. Number six: be entirely ready to remove all these defects of character. And I think that sounds like a hard thing to do um, when you say it like that. But I think it's not. Um, honestly, I think in the admitting process, uh, you've already gone through most of the steps of removing these, these illusions that, that keep us trapped. Um, and it is something that we have to be constantly aware of continually aware of, because right at the beginning we admitted that we're powerless. This is an innate trait that we're always going to be given to separating ourselves from nature and from one another. Um, so it's something we have to constantly be striving with. Um, but as it becomes something that we do more regularly, something that we say, oh, that, you know, I'm not really separated. Right there, I, I'm, I'm acting selfishly and not even in my own interest. I'm in the broader interest of everybody. I'm in the broader interest of the universe. Um, that that will become habitual and and easier and easier. Uh, seventh step: uh, humbly ask that they be removed. Um, that they refers to these illusions, these illusions that trap us. Um, I'm not going to spend much time on, on this one because I think we've sort of been going over the last few steps. Um, number eight. Make a list of all that we have harmed and be willing to make amends to them all. And uh, this is something that I myself haven't done yet. I, I haven't gone through my 12-step program. I just wrote it yesterday. Um, <laughs> I, and this could take some time. It depends how deeply we want to go in, in terms of the harms that we've caused. You know, I, I stand here and, and readily admit that I'm an addict to my own ego. Um, that I you know, put a lot of energy into being an individual. I think we all do. And you'll see individualism in, in the transcendentalist as well. Very individualistic um, mentality. Uh, so this is this is a task that could take some time for each one of us. I I know that um, I know that I have some work to do. Number nine. Make amends to such people and things wherever possible. So you know, once I have this long list of people that I've wronged, um, and probably more importantly, the environment that I've wronged, um, try and make amends. And I think we all make steps to do that here. This is a, a group of, of people who are you know, green, so to speak. Um, and we all know small ways that we can pitch in and reduce our impact on the environment. And we do a very good job. And, you know, I, I try my hardest to know that much. Um, but we can all do better. And uh, I, I promise.
wants to do that. Number 10, continue to take personal inventory and when wrong, promptly admit it. So this, this again sort of collapses into one of those earlier points. It's a continual process um, to, to think about the transcendent nature of the self and to, and to get outside of your ego. Um, it's something that can be done daily, uh, hourly, by the minute, uh, because it is always there, regardless of, of where we're, whether we're trapped in, in the busyness of life. Uh, the universe is always there, it's, and we're always just an extension of it, just as it is an, is an extension of us. And uh, we can always bring that awareness into our life and, and help, you know, Help. Let it help us be guided. Number 11. Seek through prayer and meditation to improve our contact with oneness, praying for understanding. And um, this, this is where I'd like us all to sort of join in a, in a group meditation. And I'll read a poem, and I would invite you to, to close your eyes if you're not comfortable with that. I'd like to have a few minutes here, and really just try and let go of illusions, let go of the busyness of everyday life, and, and think about that place where you go out in nature. Maybe you don't go out into nature, but there is some place you go to find peace. I'm, confident of that. Think about that place, think about the sound of the waves or the sound of the wind in the trees and, and we'll go there together. The breeze sprinted ahead of me, jumping from one bent blade of meadow grass to the next. It rushes in green waves that pass hissing and whispering to the edge of the field. If I listen in silence, with Cheshire patience, I can hear the song, but I can never discover the secret of the leaves' words. The song rises and falls, waking inhuman memories of thirsty roots, joyous flowers, and triumphant seeds. It is a silken voice, Ancient as wind and grass, yet young with hope and full of life, ageless, soft and sweet. I let the breath of it fill me with stillness, peace. I understand why the willows came here to weep. The tears are ingratitude to eternal beauty. You don't want to tell other people how to live their lives. 
You don't have to. Right? That's, that's the message here. Um, this is part of their life. And what you try to do is just facilitate the awareness that we're all interconnected. There is this oneness that we all share. And um, you know, we're all gonna we're all gonna falter at times individually. Um, that's okay. Um, you know, that first step, just admitting that we're powerless to a degree. But by being continuously aware, or trying to be continuously aware, and by sharing that awareness with others, uh, we can we can find a place where we can all um, we can all take action. Um, there are a couple of quotes that I thought were were worthwhile from from Emerson here. And I forgot to mention one earlier uh, that I thought was really for the whole Sorry, Emerson. Uh, here's a big quote, though. What lies behind us and what lies before us are small matters compared to what lies within us. And um, I would even ex expand that. Um, well, just know when he says within us, we should all think about that us being a universal sense. And uh, another quote from Emerson, Having come to this place, um, an ounce of action is worth a ton of theory. So I've been up here theorizing quite a bit. Um, and I know I haven't explained it half as well as I should have. But we need, we need to act. Um, there's an existential threat to, to our species. Um, and with the realization that we're all in this together, we need to get to, to the state house. We need to, we need to start taking the actions that are going to lead to the real changes. We need to get away from fossil fuel dependency. Um, we need to get away from the idea that we can continually grow on a planet that's finite. And the only way to do that is, is by sharing with each other, acting together. Um, and it all starts with, with simple things, realizing that we're, we're powerless, but that we can, we can do better. Um, I have a, uh, a final poem I'll read, and this one's actually titled Thoughts of Journey and Quaker Meeting. So I suppose it's somewhat appropriate. I want to hold a mirror to your soul, so I may show you what you are. I would reveal the meaning beneath the word God. Can you see the world spinning intricacies around the maelstrom sun, a moat in the constellation, circling the black hole at the center of the Milky Way? Our galaxy cartwheeling through dark stretches of space. Can you feel this dancing, waking in your awareness, expanding to the limit of existence, beyond? Can you see that you embody the universe as much as it encompasses us, this reciprocity that makes us one, the patterns that our thought shares with the stars? Behold the mirror of existence and see yourself the collective moment unified by the spirit of love.